Miss Colombia. concludes our evening gown competition and our semifinals. Thank you, ladies, and thank you, little sisters. Oh, those little girls are going to make me cry. I want one of those. Well, okay, let's see how the judges score this last semifinal event. Aha, Miss Columbia tops the evening gown competition, not surprised, with a 9.89, followed by Miss Venezuela, who again was in the top three in, in swimsuit and interview competition, followed by Miss India with a 9.792. Now remember, these scores are now added to those from the swimsuit and interview competition and average to determine the six finalists, and we will find out who they are when we come back. Welcome back to the Philippines, everyone, where we are coming to you live. And now, as our delegates join us, we have come to the next turning point in the evening. Here are the names of the six ladies whom the judges have chosen to continue as finalists. Again, ladies, I am going to read these names in random order. Good luck to all of you. The first finalist is Miss Colombia, Carolina Gomez. Miss Slovak Republic, Sylvia Lagodosova. Miss Philippines, Charlene Bennett Gonzalez. Only three spots remain, and one of those spots belongs to Miss India, Sushmita Sen. And another belongs to Miss Venezuela, Menorca Mercado. Well, only one woman has the chance to go on to become Miss Universe of the remaining five, and that woman is Miss USA, Lou Parker. Gentlemen, the six finalists for the title of Miss Universe 1994. Six very happy but nervous ladies. Now, the judges' questions are coming up in a few moments, so while the six finalists are backstage getting even more nervous, why don't we take a closer look at this fascinating country? Here's the reigning Miss Universe, Dianaro Torres, to show us around the Philippines. Welcome to the exotic and magical islands of the Philippines, where the influence of Asia, Europe, and America combine in a culture that is both ancient and modern, but always Filipino. Magellan sailed to the Philippines in 1521 and claimed these islands for Spain. That began 377 years of Spanish colonial rule, echoed here in the capital city of Manila. The conquistadors named the islands in honor of King Philip and converted the people to Catholicism. To this day, the Philippines is the only predominantly Christian country in Asia. The Philippine alliance with the United States was never stronger than the World War II, when General Douglas MacArthur established his command post here at the elegant Manila Hotel. At Corredor Island, these ruins which still stand attest to the fierce battles that took place here. The Pacific War Memorial commemorates the thousands of men and women who lost their lives here. The Philippines gained full independence in 1946 
and today is one of the most democratic countries in Asia. Manila's historical Malacanang Palace has been home to many of the nation's governors and presidents, including the incumbent president Fidel Ramos. Manila is one of the world's megacities and home to nearly 10 million people. It's the center of commerce, entertainment, culture, with beautiful paintings, sculptures, and handicraft, and of course, fun and relaxation. North of Manila is Subic Bay, one of the largest American naval station outside the U.S. It is now a free trade zone and an investment area. Subic is also a fall zone where you can ride a horse along jungle trails and fascinating things may happen. Even an encounter with thousands of fruit bats. Exploring farther north, you will find the magnificent rice terraces of Benawi, sculpted on the sides of mountains. Farmers plant rice here, in the very same terraces their ancestor, the Ifugao tribe, built over 2,000 years ago. In the countryside, you will find beautiful handicrafts, especially wood carving and weaving. The most beautiful active volcano is Taal, the volcano within a lake, within a volcano within a lake. This nation is made up of 7,107 islands, with almost that many spectacular beaches, like Palawan, with its sugary white sand. There is a number of deluxe resorts like Boracay, giving you the choice to be on the water, near the water, or under the water. So many choices, but one thing is certain, the island Philippines is a tropical paradise of Asia. Mabuhay y adiós. Thanks a lot, Diana. Now, as we mentioned, the judges' questions are coming up next. The final three contestants. And as before, all the previous scores are erased, and they begin again on equal footing. So you will continue to see the judges' individual scores, but no composite score, so that will keep you in suspense. Remember, only three will survive, so stay with us and see who they are. We are back and coming to you live from the Philippine International Convention Center in Manila and we continue our competition now with our judges' questions which will determine our final three contestants. Now each finalist is going to draw a judge's name from this bowl and they'll have to answer a question from that judge. The contestant will have 20 seconds in which to answer and as they vote the judges will consider not only the answer but they will also see a video reminder of that contestant competing earlier so that their scores will be based on their overall impression of her this evening. And remember the score from the judge asking the question will be highlighted on your screen. So we begin now with Miss Colombia. Go ahead and select the judge's name. All right, you have gone with judge number six. Stephanie Beecham. What do you consider the greatest problem facing young people in the world today? I think the greatest problem that people are facing, at, well, at least young people are facing at this time, is not being very secure of themselves. I think that we have to look up to older people because we think that we know too much. And I think that wisdom is acquired by learning from the people that have lived uh, more years of their life. All right, that's Miss Columbia. I wonder what awaits Carolina back home if she wins tonight. Oh, that's right, because the last Colombian to win Miss Universe was given a mansion and declared tax exempt for life. Okay, Carolina, if you would step back, please, Miss Slovak Republic. Sylvia, take a name. You've chosen judge number four, Bula Quo. Do you think a woman is unfulfilled if she does not have children? Why or why not? Do you understand? Tu pensi che la vita di una donna è incompleta se non ha figli? E perché o perché no? Yeah, I think that the, I think for me it's a very important the family, and I think also for women uh, the work of woman is that she must uh, have a children. And I think that it's, uh, if, if she has the children and a good man and family, it's for me, it will be so great. All right, Miss Slovak Republic, stay right where you are. You know, country is a little more than a year old. Aha, uh -huh, yet here's Sylvia with a chance to be the next Miss Universe. 
Okay, Sylvie, if you would, step back there. And Miss Philippines now. Go ahead, into the bowl. You've chosen judge number seven, Jonas McCord. If you could be a fictional film or literary character, who would you be and why? I think I would be Superwoman because she helps a lot of people. She's very fun and she's a dynamic person who does many deeds for our world. All right, that's Miss Philippines. Her mother and brother are actors, but Charlene's used to media exposure. Well, she'll have plenty of that if she wins tonight. Okay, Charlene, if you'd step back there and we'd